Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jamie Hernandez. I'll be your gracious host. Welcome to FIVO Forum Presents Five Ways to Use FIVO Like a Revenue Generating Pro. Um, we're very excited to have you guys join us, obviously. Uh, it, it's a very good time, I think, to kind of uh, revisit what kind of successes we are seeing with our partners that are utilizing FIVO in many different ways. We've kind of identified five modules, five categories, five buckets uh, of really how our best partners are utilizing FIVO. So we wanted to share that love in, through, the, uh, through the FIVO ecosystem uh, here today. So please feel free um, to, add, again, ask questions, but we'll get this uh, party going here. Uh, I'd like to introduce, obviously, our panel here for today. Uh, first off, you got myself. I am Jamie Hernandez. I'm our EVP of Partner Success with FIVO. I've been with FIVO for a little bit over five and a half years, so I've been able to graciously, graciously meet a lot of you throughout the years uh, here in this role, which is great. Uh, but we also got some all-star panelists on our end to join us. Um, these folks have used FIVO through and through in very different ways. Uh, FIVO champions, if you ask me. Uh, so I'm very excited um, and thankful that they took some time out of their day to join us today and, and talk about how they utilize FIVO at their respective org organizations. Um, so I want them to introduce themselves to everyone here. So without further ado, uh, Sharif, if you want to introduce uh, yourself to everyone, we'll get it kicked off. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Hi. hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharif Talukdar. Uh, I'm AVP at Ticketing for the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, been with the, we've been with the Spurs at the ATT Center for it's my 11 seasons, over a little over 10 years. Uh, part of my responsibility with the Spurs is I oversee ticket operations uh, for both the Spurs and ATT Center. I oversee our ticketing analytics. And then I also oversee our relationships uh, with Ticketmaster and all the different uh, vendors that work with, Ticket, with Ticketmaster, uh, including um, FIFO. So I'm really glad to be on here and um, uh, we'll kick it off to Andrew. Yep. Um, so my name is Andrew Clark. Uh, this is my ninth year with the Providence Bruins. Um, so my company is actually PSC Agency. We own and operate the Bruins. And then we also do, um, we have exclusive rights to group sales at the arena here. The Amica Mutual Pavilion. Um, so in addition to Providence Bruins tickets, we also use FIVO for Disney on Ice, Monster Jam, Globetrotters, you know, different events that come in through here. Uh, prior to two years ago, I was exclusively just um, selling tickets, uh, season tickets, and then group sales throughout the season. Uh, the last couple of years, I shifted to more of a hybrid. So um, I'm kind of unique where I'm working directly with group leaders, selling the groups, doing everything on that end, and then also uh, you know, headed up, um, integrating into FIVO and mobile ticketing. We just joined FIVO last season. It's been, uh, you know, a big game changer for us. So, um, I'll kick it over to Patrick. Hey, my name is Patrick Nolan. I'm the senior associate athletic director of business innovation and revenue generation here at Notre Dame. Um, I've been here just over one year. Um, and so my, my oversight here is marketing, ticket operations, ticket sales and service, and also business innovation. And my connection with FIVO is FIVO allows us to innovate our purchase flow, allows us to innovate the way that we market our tickets here at Notre Dame. And uh, that's that's our connection with them and, and get to work with great people like Jamie. So thank you very much, Jamie. It's a great plug. I love it. Uh, appreciate that, Patrick. Uh, so for everyone on this um, webinar, the, the five ways to use FIVO as a pro, as I mentioned earlier, we kind of bucket them into five different categories or modules. Group sales is, is really where we got kind of our start, right? And how do we digitize group sales and make it easier for the group leader uh, in order to purchase their tickets and get their groups together to come out to a game? Um, in a, I guess I could say the olden days, the, the pre-COVID days, right? People literally used to get a box of tickets mailed to their house and they had to figure out a way to distribute tickets to everyone in their group. Uh, I think those days are long gone and hence why we've seen a lot of success in the group sales module. Uh, then you kind of take the fact that we innovated a very quick and easy buy flow uh, and you have folks that use this for their digital motions, right? How do we use FIVO to implement them uh, to just be our buy flow? Uh, how do we do flash sales? How do we sell single game tickets through FIVO? The buy flow is quick and easy. If someone can get Uber to pick them up in their house in two clicks, if someone can order 
uh, food to get delivered to their house in two clicks? Why can't I purchase tickets for your organization or team in two clicks? From all that, we also said, hey, why can't we sell some of your high price things, right? Premium and hospitality. Uh, we see a lot of partners that are starting to use us to digitize their sweet sales, their hospitality sales. Uh, traditionally speaking, uh, you would say, no, well, that's a very high priced item. I want to talk to someone on the phone if I'm going to fork over thousands of dollars. Uh, what we're seeing is actually quite the opposite. If, if I can go ahead and, and buy a Tesla from my friend Elon online without ever talking to someone, and I can put in a request to get a mortgage from better.com uh, for a ton of money, why can't I purchase a thousand dollar suite uh, without having to talk to anyone? So we're seeing the digitization digitization of premium and hospitality. We also talk about our ancillary revenue. Uh, what, where else can we help you guys sell when it doesn't come to tickets, right? Uh, are you selling parking? Are you selling experiences? Are you selling scoreboard messages? You name it, we've seen partners innovate with that and use the platform to push some of that. <clears throat> and then our last uh, bucket that we'll talk about will be our distribution bucket, uh, which is, hey, how do we quite candidly distribute thousands of tickets that have already been paid for by companies, or how do we get more eyeballs in front of our product? Uh, so those are going to be the five topics uh, that we kind of discuss here in this webinar. Um, first one will be kind of the one that is obviously near and dear to my heart where I came up uh, in group sales and where this company really kind of established itself uh, as a power player in the industry. Now, we have recently, uh, for our TM and TDC partners and soon to be coming for our access partners and ticket return partners, uh, have unleashed what we call FIVO GM. Um, FIVO GM is an easy to use group ticket management system. Uh, basically, it empowers the group leader um, to promote their offer, be able to track sales. Uh, so some of you may be asking, what is FIVO GM? I haven't heard of it, or I've heard slightly of it. What's the difference between FIVO GM and WeFIVO? Uh, and basically, we've stocked up our arsenal on our end. You guys now have uh, a bunch of different products that you can use from our suite, depending on which offer makes the most sense. Uh, some of the things that FIVO GM touches on, for example, is the fact that you can your fans can select their seats specifically, um, whether you're pulling from a reservation or an open hold code, fans can select their seats. Uh, another cool thing of this platform is the group, uh, the group leaders actually get a portal that they can log into so they can track their sales, promote their offer, uh, and make sure that, you know, you don't longer have to download an Excel sheet to let them know how sales is doing. The group leader themselves can actually have access to the platform to go in and track themselves how this uh, offer or their group nights are, are doing there. Um, so <clears throat> we're excited to unleash that. Uh, we have seen some big things from it, right? You can still do a lot of the traditional stuff, uh, increase your sales with ticket offers, and you can self-service, apply discounts. Uh, so whether that's uh, get one free ticket, whether it's a buy one, get one, whether it's a percentage off, uh, you guys can go ahead and apply discounts on these offers. You capture new fans, you raise money for fundraising, right? I think fundraising is a key component to any group sales strategy out there. Um, we can do that, collect that, cut the checks directly to the organization. Uh, and one of my favorite ones, maybe for the for the BI folks in the room, um, is through FIVO GM. We actually can open up the API so you can pull the data directly into your data warehouse, uh, which is a key component. I know it's something that a lot of our partners have brought up in the past as a, as a nice thing to have. And with this platform, we can actually do that and uh, and dump that into your into your data warehouse. Uh, this will be a, a very quick video, uh, just kind of displaying the back end. Obviously, you can connect with your success rep if you want to find out more about Vivo GM. Uh, but the the beauty of it is you can create inventoried um, events pulling directly from your integration, or you can actually build non inventory events, right? If you want to build an offer for a watch party that maybe doesn't live in your ticketing system, but you want people to register for this watch party or, or to register to come to your select a seat event or something along those lines, you guys have the tools now to self-service 
builds out offers, whether they are integrated into the system or they are not. So I think having that uh, tool is, is key. Um, next up, uh, I wanna bring up Sharif here uh, to talk about the, the group sales module. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, about two weeks ago, Sharif and his crew in San Antonio uh, broke the single game record for most fans in attendance at an NBA game. Uh, they, for their 50th anniversary, um, brought back a game at the Alamo Dome against the, uh, the Golden State Warriors. They sold over 68,000 tickets uh, for the game, which broke the record. I was one of them, uh, and it was a, a great atmosphere to be there, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, Sharif and his staff utilized both Fivo GM and our WeFivo product to push over 10,000 tickets through the Fivo front um, and over $320,000 in revenue. So one, applause to Sharif and his crew for, uh, for breaking that record. Um, and two, Sharif, if, if you don't mind, can you give us a little bit of behind the scenes talk of what you know conversations were happening between you and your staff? You guys obviously had a clear goal that you guys wanted to beat. Um, how did you guys, uh, one, decide, hey, here's the cool, innovative ways we're going to send offers out on FIVO? And then because you did use WeFIVO and FIVO GM, what kind of led to that decision on which platform you should use for specific offers you were sending out? Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I would say uh, we were in around December, you know, we were, we're getting close to the goal of trying to sell through, but we really wanted that, that, that next push or more momentum. And so internally we want to get our entire, or in, our entire staff, um, our, our 400 plus employees as part of this. I mean, they knew it from the beginning in August when we introduced, when we announced the dome game as part of the 50th. And so part of the, part of the goal was to get, all our non-sales staff to get involved in helping sell tickets to help break the record. And so when we looked at both programs, we looked at it in two different ways. Our sales staff, they enjoy, they enjoy using FIBO GM for some of the things that Jamie said. Uh, the biggest one, you can select your seats. Uh, you can have group leaders track where they are at any time. Uh, what, where we, but for the sales team, sorry, for the non-sales team, the rest, rest of the staff, we chose WeFivo. And the biggest reason for WeFivo was that we held a contest for all non-sales staff of whoever sold the most tickets gets to choose a, a prize. And the biggest gift was a trip to Aspen for I think three nights and or two days and three nights or something, uh, including skiing, right? And so whoever sold the most tickets gets to choose that gift. And we had other gifts as courtside seats for a game, a trip to Mexico, a trip to Austin, at one of the hotel, uh, one of the, at the Fairmont, so we had all these things that we wanted to get our staff involved, and so with WeFivo, we had an opportunity to help track that. So we had to track all the sales that came through with WeFivo, and so we used a promo code um, that was there, basically an email alias. So when someone clicked on a link to buy tickets, they type in the email email link to get a discounted offer to sell tickets. And it was it worked out great. We used their reports to help build a Tableau dashboard that gave our staff a uh, knowing where they are at, at any point at any time. So it was actually a much faster way to build with WeFivo, in my opinion. Uh, and so we had to get that done pretty quickly. And not only did we do that for our staff, we also used WeFivo for some other some um some other city partners that came in, like our energy company CPS, our water company SAWS, they wanted to participate also. But these were like, hey, can you get this done in like five, in like 15, 20 minutes, we need these links done. And with WeFivo, very quick to get it, to get it copied, to build one, and then build like four or five really quickly, get them sent out, and they can send them out to their employees and staff members. With FIVO GM, like I said, our sales staff enjoys using that. So same thing. Um, with FIVO GM, each sales rep build their, had their own um, link built out. So with the help of the group coordinator, we build out all the links, make sure we had the name on name on seats, a rep name attached to each Vivo GM link. Um, and we were able to do uh, in terms of pick your own seat. So we had very little customer service issues, which is one of the things where our, our, our group sales rep has always talked about how people always call in later and say, hey, I actually need aisle seats or I need to move my seats to another area because I just picked the best available location. 
And so they worked out both ways. Uh, they both had different usage, uh, but it worked out in terms of here's a use case we had for a quick sale. It was really deep to the discount. So I we didn't really worry about seat location as much for our for our um, non-sale staff. They just wanted a link to send out. And then again, our sales staff wanted to have make sure they have the best experience possible, which we believe is Vivo GM gives that best available process uh, experience for our fans. Yeah, love it. And as Sharif mentioned, right, like I think the term influencer is thrown around a lot these days, especially with the world of TikTok and Instagram. But like, why can't one of your corporate partners be an influencer in that sense, right? You, you're all part of the same community. They all want to be part of a record breaking goal. Uh, so Sharif not only incentivized his sales staff to try to sell as many tickets and send one person to Aspen, although it sounds like the snow came to, to Texas for you anyways. Um, but besides that, hey, how about these local companies that work with us and that they're great partners of ours, right? Can they send this out and we can track it and whether you want to incentivize them or not is something internally you guys can decide. But I think that was a, a key component to not only sell 10,000 tickets to the platform, but eventually sell out the Alamo Dome at, at 68,000 plus. Um, so I, I commend Sharif and his staff. I think another cool thing they did was if you bought through FIVO links, you got a great commemorative shirt to go home with. Um, so the groups had an extra incentive, right? Not only am I going to get people out to the Alamo Dome game, but once we're there, we all get to walk away with a really cool once in a lifetime shirt that, that we were there to kind of break the record. And and I thought it was great because being in the in the crowd that night, you could just tell there was a sense of pride uh, for the city of San Antonio uh, to be able to break that record and kind of you know relive the old days. I, I saw people crying when they were playing some of those montage videos of of you know Robinson and Duncan and kind of the championship years back in the day. So really cool initiative to be a part of, um, and it was great. And I think it, it shows kind of the value. I already got a question of like. Hey, Jamie, what's Vivo GM? Do I need this? Yes, let's talk. Um, we'll, we'll get you plugged in on onto all that. So that one, shout out to my guy, Eric Eisenberg, who's uh, texting me while I'm on the webinar. I got you. I'll call you after this. Um, next up, we will go ahead and uh, turn it over to Andrew. Now, what I really like about Andrew and his crew, Andrew mentioned uh, earlier, it's their first year on Fivo. Um, they have done a tremendous job of digitizing your traditional group sales, right? Your, your schools, your youth hockey programs, uh, just your youth sports. So they, they've done a tremendous job. And so far, right, we're barely getting into what some would call uh, the midway point of, of the hockey season. They've already sold 37,000 tickets through the FIVO platform. So Andrew, if you don't mind, would love to hear from you. How do you guys leverage FIVO? How do you pitch it to your groups? Uh, from my perspective, it really seems that like every group does a decent amount of sales through the platform um, and through their offer. Sometimes we'll see some offers get built, but it, the offers don't really take off from a ticket sales perspective. But it seems that you guys have consistently been able to nail it where every group that gets a link in their hands is selling tickets. So I would love to hear from, from you and your staff, how do you guys leverage Fivo? How do you pitch it? Uh, and kind of what are the advantages that you're seeing now being able to digitize through Fivo as opposed to how you guys did group sales in the past? Yeah, so uh, pretty much our, our main thing when pitching these groups is just highlighting this is about to be the easiest event that you plan all year. Um, we mostly target PTOs, course groups to sing on the ice and youth hockey teams, like you said. Um, those are our larger groups. Um, so by pretty much saying that this is the easiest event you'll plan, these group leaders are used to um, doing a lot of work on their end, whether it's a bake sale for fundraising, the, you name it. It pretty much they're doing a, a lot of work. Meanwhile, we kind of pitch the old way of doing things in order to sell what we're trying to do this year. Um, so we would say, you know, in the past, you'd have to take a flyer, hang it up in the school, pass it around with an order form. Then you collect order forms from kids. Who knows if they left it on the bus? And then you have to count up all that money, send it to us. We send you tickets. Then you have to pass out the tickets to everyone. Somebody wants to join two days before the game. You More often than not, the group leaders would just tell them no, because they just didn't want to go through that extra work, which on our end was not ideal. We would try to get them to sell tickets up until the last minute. Uh, however, with FIVO, 
we can really say most of that work is eliminated. All you have to do, I'll create a personal uh, personalized flyer for you. We create the FIVO page to say exactly what you want it to say. Uh, just put it in any newsletter, bulletin board. You can still pass it out to the families. They can order the tickets right online, gets emailed right over to them. And then I'll give you updates along the way um, to let you know who has purchased, how many people have come out. Um, you know, on our end, we're unfortunately not selling out games. So, you know, we are able to up until even an hour before puck drop still sell tickets to that group. Uh, and in doing so, we really have been liking to pitch fundraising for these groups. So we can just say, you know, you're doing no work at all. And, you know, if your group comes out with even four families, we like to say, even if four families buy tickets, normally that would be at least 16 you know, maybe even 20 tickets right there. And then by word of mouth, they'll have their friend join. And then next thing you know, your group is at 7,500 tickets. You're making $2 per ticket right there. It's an easy couple hundred dollars right back to your school. Um, so when you really put it in those regards to the group leader, they just start thinking, hey, all I have to do is there's no commitment on my end. There's no deposit. There's no minimum. That's uh, another thing too. I say no minimum, no maximum. So they there's no harm in putting the offer out there. So pretty much once that group gets the link in their hands, it's very easy for them to turn around, just get a couple sales right off the bat. We can tell them, hey, this, this is already working. Um, and then just pretty much update them, if not every week, pretty close to every week leading up to the game. And then from there, you just see sales really take off. Love it. Yeah, I think uh, Andrew nailed it right on the head, right? If you pre-curate a program for these people, it's going to be tough for them to say no. Uh, hey, what's the worst that happens? You sell tickets and we cut you a check for fundraising at the end of it, right? Like there's really no downside there to signing up and, and helping it push um, the link out. So uh, I think from that component, from like the group sales side of things, right? Fundraising is a big thing, especially for these organizations. How can you leverage the platform uh, to make sure that they know, hey, you're getting money out of this? And also, you know, in my days, we used to talk to schools and be like, what date do you want to come out? What price points? What if it's we take all that out of their hands like Andrew's doing? It's like, hey, we curated this program. Here's some game dates. If you buy tickets, we'll cut you a check at the end of it. We've done all the work for you. You no longer have to sit there and talk to me for hours trying to figure out what night works best for you. Um, so I think pre-curating programs is, is key. And if it's working for schools, why can't it work for youth sports? Why can't it work for charities? Why can't it work for other organizations out there that are that are raising funds? So uh, appreciate that insight, Andrew. Uh, you guys are, are crushing it over there. Excited to see, obviously, how the second half of the season goes. Um, so that was group sales. That was our first module. As we jump into the premium hospitality module, right, I mentioned earlier uh, in the regards to digitizing high-priced items. Um, shout out to our, our friends at the Mariners, uh, Mark, Liz, Haley, that whole crew up there. Uh, that have really gone all in on digitizing their suites through FIVO. Uh, they did, you know, a sweet flash sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And even now, if you want to go and uh, buy yourself a, a suite, if you're going to be up in the Seattle area, you can actually go to their website and do that through FIVO. Um, I think from the premium and hospitality perspective, what you guys are, are going to actually see out there is that some people just aren't educated on kind of how suites work, right? Either they think it's too expensive or they think that you're naturally sold out. Uh, so if you have the inventory for suites uh, and you put them online on a platform like FIVO, uh, people can actually educate themselves and see, oh, I can actually go on here and see how much a suite uh, versus the Angels is compared to a suite versus the Yankees or Red Sox. Uh, so I think people will be educated from that standpoint. Uh, and you still take advantage of our quick and easy buy flow. Um, we've had some webinars previously, you know, on this subject alone. Uh, shout out to, to Val at the United Center, who has also digitized suites, uh, not just for the Blackhawks and Bulls, but really any events, concerts, family shows that, that are going in there, uh, right? And I think the, the key component to be able to see from the premium front um, is, hey, like 50% of people that bought suites for the United Center did that mobily on their phone, right? Like, I'd rather lose my wallet than my phone at this point, because I do so much on my phone, right? I can text, I can call, I can check my email, I can order food, I can check into hotels, check into flights. Uh, so really taking advantage of meeting the buyers where they want to buy, which is online, 
I think is uh, is key. So premium and hospitality, uh, great example of how you guys can still use the FIBO platform, but attack a different revenue stream uh, to push some some more money for you guys. Um, from there, excuse me, we'll go to digital promotions. And I'm excited to talk about this one um, because ultimately I, I mentioned we got started in the group sales world. And as we evolved, um, a lot of very, very bright folks in the industry, such as Patrick, were like, hey, this buy flow is so quick and easy. Why aren't we using it for stuff outside of group sales? And so with that, I'll turn it over to Patrick. Um, Patrick, you guys have done a really good job of utilizing FIVO for deals of the week, flash sales, uh, just your normal single game ticket sales for some games, including the, the blue and gold game, your guys' spring game here that's coming up. Uh, can you provide a little insight into why you guys decided to go with FIVO for some of these that traditionally, historically have gone kind of more through the primary? Yeah, and one of the main reasons that we decided to go with FIVO as, as a primary uh, source of purchase here for, for certain events is the ease of purchase. You know, that's been talked about a lot through this through this conversation so far, but it, it really is easy. And the purchase flow that we had previously was, was clunky and it slowed the interest of our fans that were buying. And we were noticing that we were getting people that would get to the cart and then they would end up abandoning the purchase. It's because we we're asking for so much and making, making it harder for them than it needed to be. So by partnering with FIBA, we were able to take this and we piloted it for our blue gold, which is our spring game. And the way that we did is we said, all right, our goal is to break a record, a 10 year record. Let's try to, let's try to get more people in here. Let's try to drive more revenue than we have in the last 10 years. And so FIBA was the right choice for us to go in that model. And what it allowed us to do was it allowed us to not only distribute it to make it an easier purchase flow, but it allowed our fans to be able to share it socially. And we talked a little bit about influencers in here when we talked about Sharif and all the success he had with the Spurs, but we allowed our fans to become our influencers. And so our fans were able to take their purchase and share it. One of the biggest problems we have in Notre Dame is people don't realize tickets are for sale. I know that sounds crazy, but it, it is a hindrance. And so this allows us to break down that wall and for our fans to tell the story of, hey, there, there are tickets available. And because of that, we were able to set a record. We, we, we brought in... 20% more than what our budgeted goal was and blew past the record, met our largest attendance that we've had in 10 years in our blue gold game last year. Uh, this year we started at 50 days earlier and it was, it was a no brainer. We're going with blue gold. Uh, we're already pacing ahead of where we were last year. And so using FIVO has allowed us to not only double our sales, but also allowed us to be able to double our reach. And that's really what we're after is how do we get more fans in our ecosystem so we can market and we can, we can go to them. Which going back to the deals of the week, different different uh, areas like that. A focus here was we had hockey, right? Hockey was a big focus for us at Notre Dame, and through FIVO and through segmentation, and for us to be able to distribute our primary tickets through this method, we we've, we've been able to sell out a majority of our games, and there's no tickets left for any of our home games remaining this year. All of that's because we're driving it through FIVO. Uh, one other example to to, to kind of sell you on a little bit more is we use it for our Black Friday. Um, I know we talked a little bit about that. I was on a webinar where we got to talk about what we were going to do. Uh, we lasted 2021. We had a record year in 2022. We blew past that by 187% in revenue. And that's all because we did all of our sales directly through FIBO. It allowed for a quicker purchase. It allowed for us to be able to segment better. It also allowed for us to be able to distribute to a larger group and for them to be able to share the link. So we've seen a lot of success through being able to use FIBO in the primary market, not only as a point of sale, but also as a marketing tool. Um, this, this group that we're getting in, we're able to market to and move them up the line to become season ticket holders. So FIBO has become our way to get people in the door, move them up the line, and then eventually be able to get them to buy those suites that, that, that you showed that the Mariners had on there. So that's that's how we use FIBO at Notre Dame in order to help us through marketing and in sales. Love it. More conversions equals more people in your database, more people you can market to and, and try to convert to season ticket holders, suite holders, whatever the, the next step is, right? Um, so love that. 187% is a nice increase. Love that number. Uh, and um, before I actually jump into the next one, we had some questions that came in. Uh, one that I want is directed towards Sharif. 
um, is Sharif, you mentioned the sales that the sales reps love Fibo GM uh, because fan can pick their seats. Do you know, did you guys run any data to support the preference of Fibo GM versus we Fibo? Or is that just uh, a decision that you guys made because of the ISM of being able to select your seat and, and the reps? It's more the second, Jamie. Uh, I would say we have both uh, tools for the reps to use. And most of them just went to the Fibo GM because there were less customer service issues, i.e. the, hey, I want to move my seat locations, which has added more work. So I don't, I, when I've talked to the sales reps, I have not heard of we're experiencing less sales because of using one platform versus the other. It's, a lot of other things are happening with the San Antonio Spurs outside of the platform. That is why we're having less sales in years past. Uh, but I, what, what I would say with the with the FIBO GM versus um, we FIBO is there are positives to both. And you know when you look at, I would be open to learning both and then having seen, hey, we want to do this offer, or we want to do this multi multi game offer, and you'll see some you see some differences between the two, and you may prefer one versus the other because of. Either, hey, I need to get this done immediately, which is I'm going to go with one, one way versus the other one, uh, which is another um, another another thing that I think we enjoy with Fibo GM is the ability to do add-ons. So you can add on parking and other experiences after they buy the ticket, which you can't do on Wii Fibo. And so that that's kind of where we look at what are we trying to solve for and which one are we going to go with? And the majority of our offers is going to be Fibo GM now, but there are still times we use Wii Fibo uh, to help with more, hey, we need to distribute a lot of tickets out, or we need to build out multi multi game offers, and we'll choose to go that direction. Yeah, uh, great point. I would say, look at both platforms and really lean on your success rep. Uh, if you have any questions, right? Hey, what this is what I'm trying to accomplish. Which platform would be better, uh, or what do you think? And we can kind of talk you through that. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your success rep on the FIVO front and really kind of use it more as a consulting piece where it's like, I'd rather, you know, here, this group will needs to pick seats. Great. Then I know the platform that's perfect for it. Hey, this group, it's a company link that needs 30 games, 40 games. I think we feel is a little better for that, but use us as, as a tool there. Um, next question I have is I'll direct it towards Andrew. Andrew, obviously in the group sales world, um, you know, usually there's a minimum to get the discount, right? You got to sell 10 tickets, 15, 20 tickets. Uh, the question is, when you're setting up these group offers, how do you ensure that the group hits a minimum of at least 15 tickets or whatever that number is, uh, rather than just them purchasing less than that and being able to get the discount, uh, even though they don't hit that group minimum? Uh, good question. Uh, I guess, to be honest, we kind of... Um... Uh, we do like to have a group minimum of at least 10. We'd like to pitch the, uh, you know, min, no min, no max. Um, when we set up these offers, I guess it's more so with the rep really getting a, an understanding um, what the group leader or the person calling is looking for. So if they're really just saying, hey, it's, a, you know, some buddies coming out, we'd like a group offer, then you talk to them a little more and it's just four people. We probably try to lean towards one of our mini plans. Um However, if they're kind of right on that edge of, you know, it's, it's a few families in the neighborhood might be in that 10 to 15 range by sending the link, I guess we don't necessarily um, block it. So they have to buy that much. It's kind of, you know, we'd see the first order come through of the family of four and then just following up and letting them know like, Hey, the, the Jones family already bought, you know, just um, wanted to give you an update. We're still have plenty of time before the game. So it's really just staying on top of the group leader and just, you know, not, not forcing them like, Hey, you better buy your, your 20 additional tickets right now, but just kind of a passive way of updating them, but also just keeping them in the loop. Um, yep. So we never really have a thing where it's, you know, you bought seven. So we're just going to, you know, cancel your order, but um, just really getting a, I guess, an understanding from the, the person calling in for how many people they, they realistically think will come out. Love it. Yeah. And one thing that I've also seen from other partners, if you really wanted to make sure that they had to hit that minimum of 15 is I have seen some teams that will make the group leader sign a contract and give a credit card uh, number up front before they get the link. And let's say if the minimum's 15, uh, if they don't hit that minimum, then they understand that their card will be charged for the difference, right? If the link only sold 11, then they're still going to get charged for the four to hit that group minimum. So I guess ultimately up to internally uh, what each organization decides, but that's just another method that I've seen 
of people guaranteeing that even though you're getting and utilizing a link, you're hitting the group sales minimum to get that discount. Um, Patrick, got a question for you. Uh, on your guys' offers that you send to fans, have you guys ever done something to incentivize those fans to use their purchase link to share with, with other folks? We have not yet, but but we are moving forward. And what, what we're thinking about doing is using a field pass as a way to incentivize, right? Like if you hit a number of, let's say, 100 different individual purchasers off of yours, then you would be eligible for the sideline pass and then whoever has the most out of that group would be the one that would have it for that day so we're looking at access we're looking um that's that's how we do our recognition found fans really like that is a way for us to provide them access something that they cannot purchase and something that they just can't get is a way to show a thanks for for them doing that um last year we didn't do that we just had a we just have a very passionate fan base that is is excited when notre dame tickets are available but moving forward that is definitely something that, that we're going to use as access as a way of recognizing. Sweet. And the last piece I'll touch on on the marketing side of things is even for those of you that aren't aware, we do have a marketing services wing to FIVO that is complementary with your partnership with us. We have our own internal marketing experts that can help you with pixel tracking, um, how to how to spend your ad money and, and kind of where we're seeing success, whether that's through Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that good stuff. So if any of you are interested of linking your marketing team or just having a call with our marketing team to pick their brain or kind of, you know, jam out together, um, you can email marketing services at Vivo.com or reach out to your success rep and we can make that connection. So just so everyone's aware you do have a complimentary marketing service wing that can help as a basically as a consultant um, with your sales and marketing efforts. Um, next, we're going to hit the fourth piece, which is ancillary revenue. How do we sell things that are outside of the ticket realm? Uh, and the great thing is all three folks on this call have done that. Um, so Andrew, if you don't mind talking about how you use Fivo to sell non-ticket uh, inventory with your chuck -a -fuck experience. Yeah, so we uh, did this at the last or one of the last games um, last season, and it, it really went well. So coming into this year, we decided um, to kind of brand our last two games before the holidays as our Winterfest games. And we did a chuckle puck during an intermission of each game. Um, so those not familiar, you just you get a foam puck uh, during the intermission. There's a little countdown. You throw it on the ice closest one to the target at center ice gets a, a prize. So we had a nice prize pack set up. Um, we ended up doing it as part of a um, charitable uh, thing. So all the proceeds raised from everyone purchasing the puck, it would be given right back to charity. Um, however, it was set up super easy. We used WeFivo. Uh, I created basically just a dummy event. Um, and then I just put them on a FIVO hold, all the seats. And then we just put the inventory on a page and everybody was just able to uh, buy their chuckle pucks. Um, we were also able to tie this into um, some of our group offers. We work with corporate partners, school groups, you know, everything. Uh, we were able to essentially have it as an add-on in a way. So it'd be, you know, either $24 for the ticket or you'd pay $29, $30, and then you get the chuck of puck as well. So um, this is a very easy way to grab some additional revenue. You know, like I said, we had used this as um, a donation aspect to give back to charity, but we did something similar just a couple of weeks ago uh, with t-shirts. So same concept, we were able to create a dummy event, just sell the t-shirts to members who already have tickets, or we could tie it into a combo pack essentially. So it'd be a ticket and a shirt or, you know, ticket and a chuck -a puck um, to just somebody who's looking to come out to the game. Love it. Nice and creative way to bring some extra cash in. Um, Sharif, you guys at the Spurs give the opportunity for group leaders to digitally pre-purchase their parking. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to give them that option and maybe, you know, why? Was that something that only people could purchase once they get to the arena in the past and now they have that opportunity to, to purchase online? So it was partly due to getting people to, we, 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 we charge parking on Ticketmaster.com before the game. So anyone can go on Ticketmaster.com and buy parking. What we've noticed is that people, when they buy through WeFivo platform in the past, is that they buy the tickets and they either call in to figure out parking or just deal with parking when they go up to the game. And so one thing we want to try to solve for on a service issue was 
giving our fans who buy tickets through we Devo or through any other platform the opportunity to buy ticket by parking either during the process or right after the process so one of the things that we brought up with group sales brought up with us was talking through hey how do we one provide access to our group a group our fans who buy tickets through our links and then two how do we give them a discount on parking compared to walk up or even on tm on tm.com and so what we decided was we'll give them a five dollars off parking in one of our lots so ten dollar ten dollar parking and we'll build a multi-game parking pass a parking event on we Fevo that is part of the uh confirmation email so once the email once they buy the ticket they'll get an email sent out with all the, the different highlights plus a chance to buy parking and that has helped solve some of the service issues that come through where it's more, it's, it's not only an issue, it's just another step that customer has to do, go to to buy parking for their experience at, a, at the Spurs game. And, you know, that's, that's helped a lot in terms of one, providing value to the group leader saying, not only can they get discounted tickets, they can also get discounted parking pass. And second, allowing our fans to buy parking ahead of time so they don't have to worry about um, all the stuff you have to do when you come up to the game. Love it. Making it easier for people to pre-purchase, get their money early, and uh, take some of their worries uh, out of out of their minds. So, uh, Patrick, for you guys, I, I really like this because it's the experiential part of it. Uh, you guys put together a tunnel experience. Can you guys can you tell me a little bit about that and and what that entailed? Yeah, so this one's a little interesting. Um, when we we started looking at how do we grow our season ticket holders, and one of the things that we looked at was we don't we don't market our benefits well enough, and so a side a side project of that was, well, we'll launch a stadium tour that we charge people who are not season ticket holders to go to. It was more of a way for us to highlight the benefit, and it actually turned into a six-figure revenue stream. And so the way that we did it is we allowed our fans to have a pass that allowed them to come in, our season ticket holders. They could go in on Fridays. We would open our North End. For those of you who have not been to our stadium, that's the iconic end with all the banners. It's where the team walks down the play like a champion sign where you walk through the tunnel. And so it's 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 really a bucket list item for people who come to South Bend. And we were not monetizing it and we were really weren't doing a good job of promoting it. So this year we regrouped um, and came up with an idea of all season ticket holders get it free, but we will open it up to the public and we'll and we'll sell. And the problem was what what mechanism do we do? How do we make this work? And of course, FIBO was the answer to this. It was easy for us to set it up. We put QR codes around. So if people walked around and stumbled upon it, they could be like, how do I do this? We'd say, scan this and you could buy. And so people purchase right on the spot. We also would market this and get this out to single game buyers who were coming for the weekend. Um, and we, we had in all of our marketing collateral. And because of this, it became a season ticket holder benefit and they saw a value in it, but also it allowed for other fans to come in and be able to experience an iconic Notre Dame moment and for us to be able to make a revenue stream off of it. When we started it, we were told by some some of our internal staff, this will never work. People will never pay for this. And here we are a year later and made 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 six figures off of it. So these these are the type of things that that I, I think the being being able to be nimble, being able to be flexible and agile and, and create ideas like this is is an example of why we went with FIBO with this. And it it worked phenomenal. It kept the operations staff didn't have to be out there selling. We didn't have to have sellers there. It was easy. Scan, security guard scans you in, you get to go right in the tunnel and boom, you're out. It was easy for the fans. It was easy for us. And it was a win-win all the way across the board. Love that. People are all about experiences nowadays and, and getting that Instagrammable moment. So being able to provide that to people, I think, is, is a huge thing. Um, Jacqueline, you, you had a question. Uh, can people sell an event both as a ticket at an item or just the item option? And I think the, the answer to that is yes. Andrew talked about it the way he did it, where he built a dummy event in his ticketing system. We can pull whatever lives in your ticketing system into an event, um, and therefore people can get a ticket to the game plus that item, whether it's a shirt, beanie, experience, whatever it is, or you can actually just buy the experience the, itself. Uh, so the short answer for that is yes. Uh, we can talk more in detail, obviously, about that with your success rep. <laughs> Lastly, guys, to, to close us out is our distribution model. A um, couple of different ways you can actually think about distribution here. Uh, one is getting more eyeballs on your product, right? Um, our Costco partnership, we've talked about it at nauseum at this point, but we think it's it's a big leverage uh, of our platform and our partnership. 
getting into Costco stores, getting to Costco.com. In fact, if any of you go to Costco.com right now and in the search bar, drop in FIVO, you could see any of the live offers that we have out there for our partners. You can grow your database, reach more buyer, meet, reach more buyers, and you know, you'll reach them at a place. I, I've gone to Costco to buy a $1.50 hot dog and I walk out spending $300 on a bunch of other stuff that I wasn't expecting to buy. And kind of taking advantage of, of that buy, I think, is uh, is key. So reach out to us if you have any questions about Costco. Um, and lastly is our bulk distribution tool. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of our bulk distribution tool, uh, it's currently live for Ticketmaster and, and Tickets.com. Uh, we can actually mass transfer tickets at once so the group leader doesn't have to. The use case for that is a company comes and buys 500 tickets and they just need to find a way to distribute those to everyone. Uh, we can actually upload uh, a template of names, emails, how many tickets they need. And we go ahead and bulk transfer all those tickets at once so that group leader does not have to. Saves time, mobile friendly, and you guys control what inventory you need to send where uh, in that scenario. We have a nice little use case from our friends at, at the Astro. Shout out Trevor. Um, they transferred close to 2,500 tickets uh, at one time where normally, right, if the group leader was jumping into the back end, they'd have to one by one text these tickets out or send them um, through ProVenue or, or account manager. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions about this. Um, but with that said, that is our allotted time, maybe even a couple of uh, of minutes if we have any extra questions. Um, but you know, think about the different ways you can use FIVO, group sales, premium hospitality, non-ticketed options, the experiential part of it is massive as, as Patrick mentioned, they ended up turning a six figure you know revenue stream out of nothing, out of something that just was there and they could take advantage of. Uh, parking, chuck -a pucks, scoreboard messages, um, you name it. If it lives in your ticketing system, we can pull it in and build an offer for it, which is great. Um, so please let us know if you have any other questions. But I really want to say thank you to Andrew Patrick Sharif for taking the time out of their, their busy schedules um, to join us today and talk about it. <laughs> for all of our attendees, thank you guys as well for joining. If you have any questions on any of the things we talked about or mentioned, please don't hesitate to reach out to your success rep. Uh, or myself, and we can answer any questions you may have. But we really appreciate everyone's time and uh, looking forward to uh, a, a very successful 2023 with all of our partners. So Sharif, Patrick, Andrew, thank you guys so much. Uh, pleasure seeing you. And for everyone else, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.